Let's have a look at how we account for credit sales and credit purchases using double entry bookkeeping. So I've made five accounts on the screen. I have a bank account, I have a sales account, I have a sales ledger control account, which we will be using for credit sales. We have a purchase account and then a purchase ledger control account, which is used for per credit purchases. Um, so on the last video, quite simply, if we had a sale, it's money going into the bank, which is a debit. So if we had a £100 sale, £100 would go into the bank, and then the credit would be a £100 sale. So think of Pearls, bank is our asset account, sales is an S, comes under credit. And then purchases, obviously if we purchase something, money comes out the bank, so say we bought something for £50, £50 comes out the bank, which is a credit. So the other side of the entry is posted on the debit side of purchases. So if we have a credit sale, so if we have terms with someone for 30 days, for example, how do we account for that? Because obviously the money isn't going into the bank straight away. When the sale is made, we would account for that by using the sales ledger control account. Um, so if we sold something for £200 on credit, we know that the sale comes under credit on the sales account. So let's put 200 here. The money isn't going into the bank. It's on credit terms. So this is where we use the sales ledger control account. So our credit entry was here on sales. Our debit entry will be 200 debit sales ledger control account. Now this is still full, falling into the PELS rule because this sales ledger control account is an asset account. You know, all this money that will be going into the sales ledger control account will be an asset. It's money we're waiting to come in. So say then we had another credit sale of 50 this time. 50 credit and the debit goes in the sales ledger control account. When these invoices are finally paid, how do we account for that? Well simply we need to debit the account and we need to cancel out the transactions in the sales ledger. So say it's 200 was paid we do the credit entry 200 on the sales ledger control account and put the money in the bank which is the debit if someone then paid half of their 50 pound invoice for so 25 pounds 25 credit 25 debit and then when they paid the remaining 25 credit 25 debit so money going into the bank and we're cancelling out the entries on the sales ledger control account now how to purchase Purchases work exactly the same. Obviously, debits and credits are the opposite way around. So if we were to buy on credit, the money's not going to come out of our bank straight away. It'll come out when we actually pay for the item or items. So once again, we would record the purchase. It was £100. £100 purchase. That's our debit, our credit. So it's the opposite to to our sales. Once again, it goes hand in hand with PALS because this is a liability. And if we think of L, we have PEA, then RLS, L is a liability. And this is a liability, this is money we owe. If we then bought other purchase for 500, purchase 500 on credit, so the credit side goes on the purchase ledger debit on purchases. When we finally paid for these items, the money is going to come out of the bank. So we paid off that first one for £100. That's our credit. We would debit the purchase ledger and these transactions cancel each other out. We could even strike through those transactions so they're cancelled. like so. Thank you so much for watching.